Student loan refinancing can make sense for a certain segment of the population, or you could actually be heading down a path where you're giving up tremendous benefits that you currently have that you may not be aware about. Make sure that you understand if you're going to go down this path, what you're giving up. That's what we're going to discuss today. What's going on, everybody? I'm Danny Sinowitz, The College Dude. If you haven't yet, please feel free to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share this video if you find it to be useful. Also, check out www.thecollegedude.com. We're going to be unleashing a course very soon that's going to cover the best ways in which you can actually pay for college to have a better idea to avoid crushing student loan debt. So let's talk through one very popular thing that's taking place these days as a student loan repayment pause is coming to an end, student loan refinancing. So you may be aware of what the term actually means to be refinancing. You can do that across a number of different types of debt. However, one that's becoming popular are student loans. So for student loan refinancing, there's a couple things that you want to be considering and you also want to make sure that you know going into it if it's the right thing for you or not. Let's first start with what exactly it is. Student loan refinancing is when you take your current balance and it could be at one or several providers with one or several loans and you take those loans and you refinance into one or several other loans. By refinancing, usually the goal is to do a couple of different things. It could be to lower interest, it could be to spread out the amount of time that you have to repay, thus lowering your payment, or you could be refinancing to a shorter time period to pay the loan off quicker and minimize the amount of interest that you have. Something that you must be aware of though when it comes to student loan refinancing is that many times refinancing is going to be done through private banks and through private institutions. There can be some opportunities where this does make sense. And I'm actually gonna to link to a video where we talk about refinancing parent plus loans to the actual child's name who takes those out and how you can look to do so and when those situations can be warranted. However, something that we also wanna be aware of are the downsides, and believe me, there are quite a few that you can be running into if you don't do it properly. The first thing that we have to understand are the benefits within the federal student loan repayment system. So if you have direct loans, whether those be direct unsubsidized loans, direct subsidized loans, direct parent plus loans, direct grad plus loans, or some of the other direct loans that are available to you, you wanna make sure that if you are going to be refinancing that you know what you're giving up. So the first thing that you could be giving up is access to an income-driven repayment plan. You may have heard from the actual Department of Education the number of different income-driven repayment plans that exist. There's even the new SAVE repayment program, which is implementing itself now and is gonna be some, seeing some changes within the next year. The SAVE repayment program is one of several income-driven repayment programs where the actual monthly payment is gonna be based off of your adjusted gross income. So the lower your income, correspondingly, the lower your student loan repayment. In nearly every private loan, there isn't necessarily gonna be that benefit. You need to understand how the repayment is going to work if and when it could be tied to your income. Most private loan servicers are not gonna offer this option. So as a result, if you have a lower income or are anticipating that you're gonna have a lower income, you wanna be in a position where if you're giving up the federal for the private refinance that you're well aware of this and it's something that you've planned for. There are also forgiveness options that can actually be handled by some private loan servicers, but they are very few and very far between. They're very rare when it comes to actually being able to be implemented directly at a private servicer. So if you're gonna be looking for some type of forgiveness option, you need to be aware you currently have some of those within the federal system. There's the standard forgiveness schedule, which is gonna be based off the type of income-driven repayment plan that you are in. But one of the more popular ones that's out there at the federal level is public service loan forgiveness. By refinancing from a federal to a private loan, you are then taking away the ability and the eligibility to be into public service loan forgiveness. If you're going down that route, you want to make sure that public service loan forgiveness is not an option for you because it can be a tremendous benefit and a great way in which you can have loans that are forgiven in just 10 years time or after 120 qualifying payments. The other thing to keep in mind when it comes to federal versus private loans is that federal loans have discharge options associated with them, specifically with death and disability. Upon the death of the loan holder, in this case it could either be the parent or the student, 
in those circumstances, many times, federal student loan forgivens would be discharged. There would be nothing else that would be due. Same with total permanent disability. If that happens to be the case, these loans, the federal loans, can be discharged. Private loans, however, you need to understand if it's written in the promissory note or not. So while it may be common for some, it may not necessarily be the case with every single private loan that's on the market. Understand what's in the contract because at your passing, you could be leaving that debt to somebody else within your estate. Something else that you must be considering is the type of interest rate in which you're going into. Many times and sometimes the benefit of refinancing from a federal to a private loan could be to go to a lower interest rate. However, the federal loans are going to be fixed interest rates. If you refinance to a private loan, they could be variable interest rates, which in a rising interest rate environment, you will notice that those variable interest rates are going to increase, thus increasing your monthly payment. Be aware of what you're getting into before you sign off on the dotted line. Where refinancing could make sense is sometimes if you have a private loan that you're looking to refinance to another private loan. Some of the reasons why you might want to do this is if you have a co-signer, such as a parent, and they say, I want to be released. If you then have a couple of years where you've built up some credit history and you can then qualify to actually refinance to a lower rate and drop a co-signer, usually that's a pretty good indication that it's something that you should be considering. You could also be lowering your monthly payment. Or again, like we talked about earlier, you could be stretching out those payments if you need the desired flexibility within the time period. All of these could be reasons why you would want to look to do a private finance ref to a new private loan. However, you should be proceeding with extreme caution when it comes to doing a federal to private refinance. If you plan to do that, you're going to need to understand you could be giving up some great benefits. The other thing to keep in mind, too, is that for grad students or students who are com considered independent professional students, you are eligible for $20,500 of an unsubsidized direct loan, but you're also eligible for what are called federal grad plus loans. And these loans are, again, all part of the direct loan system. They can eventually be consolidated and repaid on one of those income-driven repayment plans. They can be eligible for public service loan forgiveness among the other forgiveness programs. And these loans can also be discharged in the event of death or disability. So if you decide to go the route of then going to an income-driven repayment plan, that's usually going to put you in position where it could be a better situation than if you were to refinance to a private loan. When it comes down to it, you want to make sure that you take inventory of the current loans that you have and make a pros and cons list of doing a refinance. If you have private loans, that may be an opportunity that you could look to do a private loan refinance. But if you have federal loans, you want to make sure that you check every box off the list if you are considering a private loan. As always, this information is meant to be educational in nature and is not meant to be taken as specific advice. If you have specific questions relating to your loan strategy or anything related to your financial plan, make sure to reach out to your financial planner, to your CPA, to your tax attorney, and anybody else who's helping out you in your specific situation. Again, please feel free to like this page, to give it a share, and also to subscribe to my channel for more great content when it comes to college planning and student loan planning. Until next time.